people and welcome back to our weekly show that's called Wrestling in Mom's Basement. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This guy to my right opened his Money in the Bank briefcase to burgers. Do you have any one? Uh, this is our IHOP review. Sponsored by IHOP? Yes. Review of Green. IHOP or IHOP? IHOP. That's what Carl is. Yeah. For, just for a few weeks now, I hope. Yeah, they'll probably go back. No, they are. It's just temporary. I didn't end up. Uh, okay. It's just an odd choice that they're going with. It should have just been International House of Breakfast. If you didn't just want to focus on pancakes. Yeah, why not? Hello, I'm a marketing major. Genius. <laughs> You're an accounting graduate. <laughs> I didn't take marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, but I market this podcast to the masses. So. Yes, to the masses. So. You, the beautiful... Hundreds. Washed masses. You'll have to go wash if you if you could be. Well, no, I was going off of Damien Sandel, the unwashed masses. But you guys are nice. You guys are clean. You guys you can be are f- washed. You can be filthy now if you want. Uh, yeah, sure. Why I'm not. down for a little dirty. Can you take a crap in your pants? Just, just, just don't do it without. In my general area. I knew Vicky for three years. So I, I she probably took a crap in her pants. So I, could, I know dirty. Uh, uh. Great American Bash. Welcome to the jungle. Great American Bash. 1997. And she did it wrong. Uh, date June 15th, 1997. Finally enough, it is 21 years to the day for the same burrito. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like we planned it. Did we? No. <laughs> it's literally a, a randomizer. This is a very special day. Phone. This is a very special day in history, too. <laughs> yes. 21 years to the day for this. And I graduated eighth grade thirteen years ago. Uh, I don't remember the date I graduated. You grade. should. Uh, the location was the Mark of Quad Cities. That's the name of the arena. <laughs> in Moline, Illinois. Attendance nine thousand six hundred thirteen. Contains Bobby Rose, Dusty, Bobby Key, and Dusty Rose, and Tony Schiavone. Uh, the main event here is Sasha's DDP and Full Sky Anywhere match. Also, there's a. Battle football players match on Nitro the week before. That went so well, we were repeating here. Now, one thing about those silly disappointment was is that the match has got time, as the shortest match on the show is nine and a half minutes long. On the other hand, the shortest match on the show is nine and a half minutes long. Let's get to it. The open video is about American. DDP has chased the American dream, not Dusty. Uh, which is a nice idea, actually. And we also have the outsiders defending against Piper and Flair. Tipping goal with Psychosis versus Ultimate Dragon. This is the revenge match for Dragon, Abraham Dump Ono, as Sonny brought in Psychosis to fight them. Dragon sent it up for the crowd's hot back in. Psychosis takes it back, but he's not to the floor almost immediately. Entering again, Dragon tries to leap from, but Psychosis punches him out here. Dragon one ups him by dropping elbow on Psychosis as he used the mat. Uh, there's a handstand in the corner, and here comes the kicks. Uh, the crowd was waiting to drag in here. Uh, Psychosis takes over, will close on Wolfstar a lot. The crowd and Giolo is making the show feel better than previous of Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, so, they're actually hot for a cruiserweight match. Psychosis gets guilty on top row, but Dragon tries to dial him. He injures his knee. Sonny adds his some kicks to keep Dragon down. Psychosis punches him into a 6 one nine position, but with Dragon face up. Psychosis is a guilty leg drop down to Dragon and barely misses the table. A cradle gets two, Dragon rolls to the floor, Sunny fires off more kicks. But this time, Dragon blocks him, he sets him for a suplex, and Psychosis takes him to the save. Back in, Dragon has some more kicks, that almost knocks a horn off of the mask. They both try to roll up with Dragon kicking him, and now uh, it's the outside moonsault. That, uh, the thing was gorgeous. Oh, I hit, uh, Tombstone mm-hmm. to ring a suit. I learned this fact on the show that apparently the outside moonsault includes the. The, um, the real name of Ultimate Dragon. Mike Tanay actually said that. Oh, on, well. On TV. Or he said it on pay per view. Psychosis gets sent to the apron and it comes out with a slingshot for a spy to send Dragon to the floor. Huge dive over top to Dragon out. Back in. I did sign that Wofford Smash because I think they were going out of the real Yeah. Dragon rolls forward into a round by his counter to the Sunset Book for two. Psychosis tries a moose soul press that Dragon drops him out of the air. Super Rana looks to set the tire suplex when he goes after Sunny instead. The distraction lets Psychosis play his springboard versus Dragon for two, and Dragon sends Psychosis in the sign, and the Dragon sleep with this attack out. 
Uh, for me, it was my favorite match of the night, and I know it's his too. Yeah. Uh, we we did talk a little about about the pay per view, uh, but yeah, this felt like the quintessential cruiserweight match in WCW with the, just a hot opening. The crowd definitely got into this match. Uh, they were loving what everything uh, Dragon did, and both guys really fed off the energy of the crowd and gave it right back. They were literally all over the ringside area. Uh, and they and they went for everything, and I, I felt they put a pretty good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like this one as they were flying all over the place. And I, Dry was a, watching them back. Dry's a lot better than I remember him being. Yeah, his last few matches I've seen too have probably been the best ones on the pay per views. Uh, I'm not sure why he didn't become a bigger star than he was in WCW, but he, maybe it was the line. He slipped on the WrestleMania 20 set. But maybe it was the language barrier issue. He didn't become a bigger star. Yeah. Oh, however, I did watch, listen to uh, 83 Weeks, and, he, and Bischoff actually talked a little bit about Ultimate Dragon and said that he was uh, very respectful, very nice to deal with, uh, uh, and he actually spoke English pretty decently, too. Okay, maybe it wasn't like this better. Like he, like, he wouldn't hold long conversations, but he could at least get the gist of what you were saying. Okay. Uh, for me, it was a B+. Plus. B+. Uh, Harlem Heat versus Star Brothers. The winners are no longer contenders, which makes me laugh, as you know the history of the Titan titles <laughs> and all the fair matches. As Stevie and Scott goes go on his power versus power, they collide the ropes and no one moves, so Scott hits him in the face with a forearm, while all seals hit him in the head. Steve kicks him in the face to take over. No boot misses, so Scott throws him over on a plugs. The Stars clear the ring for a bit, and Stevie wants Rick. Oh. And Rick. Stevie pounds him down as all the Booker, but he wants Scott. Rick won't leave, so Booker doesn't get what he wants. Okay, now he does, and Scott shows him in the corner. Booker breaks up a test strap and tries to headlock that because he's nowhere, and so he tries to fall Nelson. Scott easily breaks him, but takes a knee to the ropes to slow him back down. Butterfly powerbomb gets one for Siren. Older Rick goes with the brawl, the brawl and doesn't work, so he goes to the Siren and spray and butter with a suplex. Scott comes over a grill press, but he jumps into a boot. Spinner Rudy says that the harm sidekick and Booker clotheslines Scott and something the floor. Scott sends him into the barricade takeover and they head back inside. Rick comes in again and goes, that's yes, also. But this time Stevie Power slams him on the floor to find him to vanish. Rick is in trouble now as Harm Heat mulls Scott in. They hit a modified heart attack, uh, hard on the sidekick instead yeah. of the clothesline. Call the Big Apple for delay two. Rick catches a kick into the power on suplex, kind of moving to pull both guys down. Hot Tide brings in Scott and the ring is clear quickly. On top of Frank Siren puts Stevie down. And here's Vincent to hit Stevie. Set up the Cyrus lose and the Al Cyrus on to face them. Uh, the match didn't really like it, it was well wrestled. It was well worked. It was well wrestled, but it doesn't necessarily go into another level to me. It just felt like they were just going through the motions. Mm-hmm. Uh, that in the end sort of uh, it sort of negatively affected the match for me too. Uh, the Outsiders were the guys that literally walked into the WCW and literally WCW had to get police to get in between their workers and the Outsiders. Uh, and that and also NWO literally has the numbers to have the Outsiders take on anybody they want to mm-hmm. still win and still win just by the pure numbers game. Of just having somebody on the outside, they they can have a thousand people on the outside, and then get sure. Uh, so they can literally go against whoever they want to. Um, so I didn't really get why Vincent got in the Snyder's way, essentially. Right. Uh, that and Harlem Heat are almost in the same level as well. So I'm I'm not sure why you would pick one over the other. Yeah. Essentially. Uh, but the match was well worked. It just didn't keep my interest, and I kind of had problems with how they booked the ending. Yeah, uh, this is pretty much a long TV match with a bad finish. It uh, it makes sense on paper, but there wouldn't be a title match at least on paper. You guys can't remember. It was around the time that the titles became a prop, as without anyone defending them, the outsiders would be called the best team in the sense. Uh, you had a bunch of teams that won them, which helped, but with the titles never being defended, there's something or anything. Yeah. I gave the match a D. D plus. Uh, this is a taste of the sign bubble post match. 
few more sources come in. Uh, apparently this is Fallout from last month, the Slender Reef. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm guessing Conan left the Dungeon of Doom. Let's go. Uh, Conan's a rapper. If Dungeon of Doom actually happened, it takes this time. Conan's a rapper, y'all. Uh, Brawl of Star and Mars takes over some forms in the back. Runs Rock and pulls Conan down again. Hugh has to the floor for no apparent reason and slam into the steps. Back to the up for some chin lockery. Nails him off by Kravis as Master slows way down. Mars sends him to the floor again, take over, but throws him right back inside. Spin wheel kick gets Mars still on his knees and then cover for two. Now ult to Fujiwara armbar and bam one at that. Gut rush suplex is coming flying so he didn't like leave the holes on for that long. Back to the armbar which Conan usually breaks and doesn't sell all. Clothesline sends up a stomp, pull and roll things and now ult for the head scissors. This is one of those less lay on the mat for most of the match matches. As Cody lets go to the head scissors and puts on a cross arm breaker. Mars won't bother to sell either, so Cody kicks him in the head. Mars is laying there, so Cody goes in, goes up on it and gets back up. Back to the arm bar tent, but Cody escapes a roll up this bail a roll up goes bailey. So Mars lives with the moose soul, but he stands there for an hour and a half, allowing Cody to crush him. A bait to kill a sunrise because Mars will pass out instead of giving up. Uh yeah. This match never clicked for me. Uh, it just didn't feel like they had any sort of chemistry together. Uh, both guys, I know, can put on a decent enough match. Uh, Bill can get guys over in a tough way. And Conan, I've seen him have pretty good matches before. Uh, but for some reason, their styles just didn't mesh together. They didn't mesh together. And it, it, it was a very, very boring match to me. Yeah, uh, oh man, this was bad. Uh, they laid around a lot. They didn't do anything at all. Yeah. No one was saw anything, and the story wasn't interesting at all. No one was at all, and the match was just horrible. This is one of those things that you forget about them selling you. Horrible mid card matches like these. Yep. I give it an F. F. Uh, G told us about how someone's having issues with his employer and might show up on Nitro tomorrow. Someone was, and they did show up on Nitro. Two weeks. Uh, and his name was Raven. Public Enemy doesn't like Harm Heat. Good enough. Glacier versus Wraith. Morris is handcuffed to the post here. Wraith takes it to the corner, fires off Ella the Chops, but Glacier comes out and slides his own. Some kicks send Wraith to the floor, and there's a diver on top by Glacier. I'm stunned by seeing him do more than just kicks and strikes. Uh, Still on the floor, and Ray for sending steps. They say he slows Glacier to the apron for shot that back, which gets two back inside. Corner splash versus a Glacier as in the corner, Mars is chained up. Morris is chained up in. So Morris trips in. Ray flows up a power roll and drops back to hot shot Glacier off the top rope. All to the chin lock, which, which is up a little time. Glacier gets off, misses across by, and falls to the floor. Back inside, top rope clothesline is no cover. Glacier tries to choke him, but gets shut back down. A Vader bomb elbow misses and Glacier comes back with a backdrop. There's a spin kick and jumping back elbow for two. A suplex pulls Wraith down and he goes up with his crush. A superplex pulls both guys down. But Morris gets up to distract the referee. James Vandenberg will for distraction number two. Morris throws in the chain. Glacier catches it. Wraith hand pick. Uh, believe it or not, the last two Glacier matches we've had have been better than expected. Uh, I'm not going to say this match was good by any stretch of the means, but it, it wasn't terrible, which is which is where I thought Glacier would be, and this feat would be. Uh, yeah, I think they put on, I guess, a decent enough match where you were like, okay, this this isn't dog crap like the last match, but it's it 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 it, it could be mildly entertaining. Uh, yeah, Glacier did other things besides kicks. Uh, that's that's pretty strange. And uh, I think Wrath was just capable enough to hold it on there. Uh, this is one of those matches, and Jesus kept trying on and on. Ernest Bill was brought in, I think, in May, last month. And he didn't make things any better either, but they did have a bad match on Match of the Beach. Yeah. The next year. Uh, nothing to see here, though, other than a filler match. Not great one, but whatever. I think I ended soon after it though. Uh, I gave it a B. I mean, not a B, uh, a D. D. Definitely didn't give it a B. Glacier is caught to the rope and is, and is trying to beat down. Up next, woman's title, Akira Hokato, or Hokato versus 
Medusa. Title versus Corona here. We actually get a Candy Divine reference from Women's Wrestling Expert, Lee Marshall. I told us about his AWA, his AWA days. Hokkaido starts to control and sends Medusa across the room right here. She chokes Medusa in the corner, man, and the ring kills the boss so far. Also, Chinlock less than two minutes and Apologar kills Medusa even further, but she comes back with a reverse match to my kicker. There are a pair of drop cases she gets too. Marshall is talking about something called Johnny Taco's Gym in Las Vegas. Hakaga comes back with choking and a slam suplex kind of move. More choking falls on Hakaga, shrugs off and kicks ahead. A moth by suplex for the fourth time. But Medusa gets to the rope. Medusa comes out with a spin kick to the boobs and stares the kicks to the ribs. A small package gets to the champion and Medusa comes with a verbal with an axe handle or blows her knee out in the process. Marshall again talks about AW Women's Wrestling and an old injury from 10 years ago. Modify start reversal and needs some more as this match is better than most of all the other shows so far. Yeah. Uh, now it's up to a full start board and Medusa's in trouble. Back this release because it's very hard to hold to keep on and Hokkaido goes up. Medusa comes back with, with a strand here and a suplex, but it covers the lead, so it only just two. Another German suplex attempt is countered by a league bar. Uh, one of the things you don't see very much in the company this time in this era is time between moves uh, in, in WCW. No, that's one of the you don't say. It's just going from one move to another, which takes a lot of getting used to. Yeah. The lay bar stays over a while and is followed by a guilty lay drop attempt by Med but Medusa moves out of the way. Uh, German Suplex gets two and is a back to the is a kick to the day. Uh, Thomas watches his knees, but Medusa can do anything because of the I still play out by Hakata and is this and the retirement of course in place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me I thought I thought it was a very good match. Uh, but my, I do have problems with it though. Uh, just, like for the first half of this match it just felt like they were just in a full sprint. Like literally just trying to get all their shit in before they run out of time and they have to go home. Uh, and then at, just at some point, they, they sort of start to slow down. Uh, I'll give them credit, though. The, the faster pace in the beginning of the match really did actually get the crowd going. Uh, Moline, Illinois, this night was actually a very good crowd. Uh, but yeah, the first half was very just fast, quick. We need to get this stuff in. And then it sort of like got to a point where they couldn't, they definitely couldn't keep up, and then it started to fall a little flat at the end. And literally just, it felt like just a random move took out Medusa, essentially. Yeah. Uh, again, again a, a very good match, very well wrestled match. But there there are just little structural problems for it from there. Uh, this was the best match of the night, probably, other than the opener. Yeah. Uh, but that's not saying too much. Uh, just, uh, not boring, but, like, all over the place in a row. But the story and knee injury helped a lot. Uh, at the end of the day, though, who... I hate to say, but who cares about the women's division this hour anyway? Uh, this was yeah. the end of the women's WCW title. WCW didn't really care about the women's division. Yeah, this was the end of the women's title. Anyway. Yeah. And Medusa would be back with Macho Man in... Nine-nine. Three years? Yeah. Or two years? Yeah. Uh, I gave it to C+. Plus. C-. Minus. Uh, when Medusa being taken to the back, their career being over, Jean pops up to say that her career is toast and puts some life in her face. The fans <laughs> can't leave her alone. <laughs> yeah, they did. This is a jerk <laughs> move even for Jean. Damn it, Sherry, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> I'll still always remember that. Uh, up next, she's like freaking out. <laughs> up next, Chris Benoit versus Mint. This is another death match. Me can win by submission or knockout. Which Benoit involved in the death match is probably a joke that will, that will lack a lot of poor taste. Uh, Benoit takes it straight to the floor and chases Jimmy Hart off. Back in, and Benoit immediately tries to cross by Minglis up to break it. I don't think the hole was on the way yet. Uh, Benoit tries it again, this time he's on. And Ming makes a rope, and when you think death match, you think rope breaks. Uh, they slug it up, and Benoit skips a power bomb. Benoit supports it over top and to the floor, which is as impressive as it sounds. Back here, Benoit goes over the back of the ring, but Ming kicks the foot out, and Benoit's caught in the true well. A kick to the face gets about seven for Ming, and Spine Buster gets about five. Kick to the face out by Moth by Giant Super, but Benoit bites his hand to escape. That's smart. The idea here is that Benoit can't hurt her, but he keeps trying. Ming chops him down and hits the top rope splash of seven. 
But Ming kicks some right back down. Benoit is onto the floor, but he reverses Ming into the barricade. Back in, Benoit has the German suplex to put Ming down for eight. Benoit throws on another German because the first one works so well, this one gets that six. Benoit kicks in the floor and does nothing at all. Ming goes back in, he's going to tell the job to take over and does a death grip. But Benoit dies over top of Rick up. They slug it up to the floor. And Ming takes over with a headbutt onto the chin lock as Dusty's told him about breathing apparatuses. <laughs> breathing apparatuses. <laughs> And, Why not? and by the way, he tells him, well, thank you, Quincy. <laughs> He's got a bicycle. A suplex just been on down by Mill Rose Splash Misses. The cross stage goes on, but Ming gets a rope. Bill Wall immediately pulls on again, but Ming makes the rope one more time. Ming pounds him down, but gets caught in dragon screw leg whip, and then a cross stage goes on for, I think, the fourth time to smash. This one's closer to the middle ring, too. And they're about man hand. Ming blacks out to give him on the win. Dusty says this is a... <laughs> this is a historic moment. <laughs> Outside, but <laughs> probably because Ming just gave up. Oh, yeah, passed out. he just passed out. Uh, Ming in a death match usually doesn't usually end up nice for the other guy. Uh, for me, I, I really did like how this match started. I felt like it was very hard hitting. Uh, it was very exciting too. Literally, Benoit just did a suicide dive to start off the match. Yeah. Uh, and chased Jimmy Hart off, which was kind of hilarious. <laughs> they did that again, uh, similar to when they put Kevin Sullivan yeah. in that match. Exactly. Hard to uh, um, The funny thing happens with Ming afterwards that we'll get, we'll get into it afterwards. Um, but for me, I thought this match started very hot. However, after that, it didn't feel like it went anywhere to me. Mm-hmm. It just felt like they were just trying to... They were trading huge shots to keep each other down for like a seven count right. and then trying to get each other in a hole. Mm. That, that's, that's what it felt like it was doing to me. Uh, I do expect more out of a Chris Benoit match than that. So sue me. Uh, but overall, not not a terrible time to go on. Uh, not bad for the most part. It was it was me not selling anything for a while until Benoit held him in Christmas for forever. It was a bad one. I think Deathmatch I think something a little bit more violent than this. It wasn't bad, but it's being, it's being overboiled a little bit too much. Yeah. Uh, I ended up giving it a seat. Post match, they both get taken out of structures. Why did get taken out of the structure? Yeah. Oh. Why in the world would Ben Wong need a structure? I don't need help. He had a close face on for like two minutes at the end. They only have one structure, so that takes him off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the funny part comes in. Yes. That they're in the middle of uh, Mean Gene, I, I guess promo, trying to shill out his uh, the hotline stuff. Uh, like, like literally in the middle of it, somehow Ming's stretcher literally gets knocked over <laughs> off the ramp. <laughs> and Mean literally just goes, Mean literally j- legitimately reacts to it. And he goes, oh, let's get a shot of this. And next thing you see is the stretcher tipped over on the cement floor. And Ming's just laying there out. <laughs> it's, it's hysterical. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wash back to the beast, our advertisement. Up next, Kevin Green versus Seaman Michael. Uh, great, more football parts are something. Uh, Green charges the aisle and it's on quickly. He mouse with Michael and pounds away. So Steve heads at four. Mongo pulls in the four and yells at some fans in green jerseys. Uh, uh, then I realized it was his parents. Uh, Mama Green hits him with a purse. Uh, Mongo stomps down, come back, and Green's in trouble. He can't sell better main. Okay, it's a football as well. Yeah. Uh, Matt Breaker pulls Kevin down for two. Uh, Green comes back with something like a face press and charges into the Matt Breaker. Kevin takes him in the corner and rings down punches, but Mongo drops him and it's a drop in for two. Mongo has him in the corner, but Green kicks him in the chest, break up, top row, close on, gets two. Time for some choking, but Green has to break it because of Mongo being a roast. A big clothesline puts McMichael on the floor, Green follows him for some stomping. A kind of stinger spots misses, and Mongo chokes him more. Here's Char with the brute case, but he hits Mongo in the back of the head by mistake. Green gets the easy pin. Uh, yeah, much better match than you possibly could expect. Uh, Kevin Green actually 
probably did a better job than Mongo did. Uh, he actually made Mongo have one of his better matches. So let that sink in. Uh, the, the train wrestler, we turned from football, but the train wrestler was literally worse was literally worse than the football player who came in for a match here. And there. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually going to give bonus points to Kevin Green on that one for literally being he was athletic too. He was jumping literally from the ring all the way out to the floor of the top rope and even back into the ring as well. Uh, so he did show off pretty good athleticism. He he actually put on a strong performance, I think. Much better than we could expect. Uh, yeah. It will, apparently there's a really big Reggie White versus Steve Mongo match on the Nitro before. So, uh... Huh. A green loose has time been in the series. Uh, Mongo continues to be horrible, though. So the match is barely as a result. Uh, and then was more about pushing the horse in a split, which I've been going on for about six months at this point. Uh, not a great match, but not terrible. I gave it a D plus. D plus. Uh, Medusa's having a mingle that. Tag titles. Brian Piper and Ric Flair versus Al Sires. So that double concerns match. Or it really doesn't mean Jack. So, uh, alright. <laughs> Flair holds Star Face up, and there's a toothpick to the face. Uh, Flair's punched down by because I have a chop stumble to four. Back in Flair's flipped to the corner and runs the April range of the boot from Nashville with two. All the big kids are pounding down to side side for two. Hole adds in some cheating, but the distraction of Piper and Little Blow. For Little Blow, bring your Piper. Piper hooks a quick sleeper in a hole. Buzz easily broke a hole, crashes him on top. But both guys down, Flair beats up six on the floor. Four fights set up the alley as Piper gets up. There's all the tags that's two on one. Uh, this was supposed to tease a Flair real turn. Ult to the hole, pounds away, slash hyper in the back of the handlock. Rice says, bring it on. But it just Nash instead, we all on a bunch of these two ropes. Big boot pulls him down, and ult to the hole for the edge to retain. Uh, yeah, this, this match is kind of weird. Um, it, it just it just felt like it didn't go anywhere to me. Uh, that and the ending is kind of a, a little illogical, where Flair literally just abandons his partner to go beat up six. <laughs> Uh, did a little good chase after him and then and beat him up. And then he's just gone so long that he literally could have came back before the match was over, but whatever. Uh, yeah. it, 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 was, it wasn't terrible, but kind of a huge waste of time. But there was a lot of way around for a lot of the match, and, and it was pretty stupid. Flair was supposed to turn heel, but Piper reeled the Hollywood to turn and go anywhere. Uh, this is nothing and nope, and Flair got all 16 pretty stupid. Flair. Or no. Then it was more or less a squash anyway. Yeah. Uh, give it a D. D. Main event, Diamond Dallas Hayes versus Randy Savage. Uh, Fulls County. Anyway. Both for Coles at Lysale. Which, uh, is, which is about a bunch of things over the years. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, the healer said that this is lights out. And then the lights literally went out. And then the stage like flashed or something. Uh... Uh, Liz looked great tonight. Uh, Kimberly looked great, so. Uh, Paige came in for the crowd, and it's on a quick color, 10 doesn't work, and it's actually so far. Paige dives on his, on this, but the rooms are still bad, so it puts both guys down. Back to the side, Paige takes him down with clothes on the wall at the top. Back to the floor, they go to the crowd with size and control, they fall towards the concrete wall, and then for Gordon to the concourse, Paige gets a crush and waits for Savage to come back though, so he can break the crush on his back. Back to the ring side with Savage and stuff like a spy boss or a firm mess with Paige rooms. Paige is a weapon somehow, but Savage has power to slow him down. Paige has to hit him with whatever he had, and both guys are down. Savage gets up first and takes the tape off of Paige rooms for no apparent reason. He pile drives the referee. And Paige has to think. He hits the head butt, but Randy goes right to the ropes. A second referee comes out and is tossed as well. Savage is in the four goes into Kim Weaver, referee number three, Nick Patrick. Nice to see. Uh, they found the stage, and there's a VIP picnic area with Sage Destroy. Because, you know, why not? Why not have that in the middle of a wrestling show? Dusty freaks out because there's a barbecue pit. Uh, Paige wins the battle of the smoked meat and is back to the ring. Uh, Savage gets crushed on the face and, and pancaked. 
The car is counted by Joel Breaker and a head outside then. Savage does a pop driver on the assist concrete by Nick Patrick with save and gets decked as a result. Savage snaps into it. Wait, it's some gym. Uh, <laughs> sending Patrick into the barricade and beat up a photographer. Paige comes back and so Sam is still to go back in. A low blow stops the diamond car, but another attempt it connects. Both guys are down here, so here's Hole. Page plays the ball, but Savage clocks him with Hole's belt. The outsider says, let Savage to the elbow for the pin. I think the funniest part of the match was probably Macho. Yeah. Just beating up referees and random people at rings. <laughs> he, he even almost beat up Kimberly. In yeah. The match. Uh, that, that was the more entertaining part of this match to me. Uh, the match wasn't bad, but I think... I think I've seen a better Macho DDP match before. Uh, it's literally just felt like it went all over the arena and was trying to be better than it actually ended up being. Uh, it, w- it wasn't bad, but it it, it, it was okay. Uh, pretty soft roll, but then they so want. Yeah. It's I think it's better than I think one of the matches. I remember Kelly against Scripting. I want to say it's their first DDP match. Mm-hmm. As this page won the first one, I believe I was a spring stampede. I have a little problem with the interview. The other stuff was annoying, but you know it was coming. Pretty decent main event, though, and I was probably the best they had in most of it. Actually, it might be, it might be the best big stampede main event in, like, from 96 in WL to, to their end. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it may actually be the best main yeah. event. Yeah. So, uh, overall, for that match? Uh, overall, right. I gave it a C+. Be mine. Uh, uh, overall, I gave it to see the show. It was literally middle of the road. Um, you, you had like one excellent open match, and you and you had a couple other bright spots on the show too. But in the end, it, it wasn't a bad WCW show, but it wasn't anything memorable. It wasn't anything to, to write home about. Yeah, our grades are probably just one ball from each other. Yeah. Uh, overall, for me, C minus. Uh, it's definitely the. One of the better WCW shows we have. But still, not all that great. It's light years ahead of some of the stuff we did. But then again, what is it? Uh, Hogan will be back the next month. We reviewed this a few weeks ago, about a month ago. It actually beat 1997. Yeah. And actually, wrestling pay per view, unfortunately, was Ben's Ramen and Tank Match. Anyway, decent show here, but there's nothing worth saying at all. Yes. Alright, so now's the time. Your pick. It's my pick. Yes. Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, 2009. Uh, John Cena defends the WWE Championship in a tables match versus Sheamus, Batista versus Taker in a chairs match. Yes, and Christian Sean in a ladder match. I don't think. And other matches, and that'll be next week, along with the usual reviews. Yes. Money Bank NXT review, Monday. Mm-hmm. Say that. Bye. Say that. Bye.